I'm MC Toon, and this is a celebration of the death of Flat Earth, and they're claiming that the sextant works in any way remotely possible on Flat Earth. Of the death of Flat Earth, and they're claiming that the sextant works in any way remotely possible. Flat Earthers have been claiming for way too long, for months, for maybe more than a year, that sextants only work on Flat Earth. Strange, though, they never once showed the actual process. They just made these claims. Double the complimentary angle, does it Every, double the base of your triangle? You don't even know what a 90 degree is. You don't right, even the, know that 90 degree is essential for a right angle. Sorry, the complimentary angle was measured off a flat plane. So you're not, no one's going to answer that. So you're going to ignore the fact that you've just proved Earth's flat by measuring this angle. That's an elevation angle. The measurement that you took proved Earth is flat. You're going to get time. hung up on that one, aren't you? Don't get hung up on that angle measurement he's trying to make a claim with, proving <laughs> Earth's flat. Don't get hung up on it, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Flat Earth. Apply that angle in a way that only works on a curved surface. So he can't get an angle from a curved surface. That's the point. It's an elevation angle measurement from a flat baseline. Yeah, that's gonna require a flat earth to measure. You lost. That's the question grade, is, is there a right triangle involved in finding the distance to the GP? That's called celestial navigation. It's the thing you try four times to pin on us as a straw man that doesn't work. Does it need 90? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely does. It's very, very well documented. But you're saying you get... So, but I'm saying, no, celestial navigation well documented. But they don't say it's a right triangle. Yeah, uh, yeah they definitely... Mean. Let's just hear him lie to round out the live show. The documents you've been looking at, I've looked at the same documents, they don't claim you're using a right triangle or triangulation. For triangulation? <laughs> you stupid <laughs> clown! <laughs> it's true. Do We're you realise how fucking stupid it is to say you don't need a right triangle for, quote, triangulation? I'm on a navigation site now. It says, in simplified terms, when we take a sextant altitude of the sun, we're creating a right angle triangle with it to the Earth's surface at the GP and ourselves. Clown. Great, great school geometry tells us that the two angles in the right angle triangle must equal 90 degrees. Guys, it's that's that's just not how that works. That is excellent. I'd like to get into something just to let this is so stupid. You, you're not going to believe it. Remember, I always said that we're, we're we're dealing with some kind of left wing fuckwit faction that just makes shit up. I don't know how many times I've been told uh, over the past week that I'm not even taking into account the past couple months that there is no trigonometry. When trig no trigonometry and no triangulation while using the sextant. I'd like to point everyone's attention to this little short presentation that I wasn't ready for that I just thought I'd go over. So let's take a look at this. Remember, their claim is, uh, for the most part, because I know you guys have been hearing it too, no trigonometry and no triangulation. So let's go to Ocean Explorer from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration on the sextant. For centuries, mariners have also used a form of the transit called a sextant and a triangulation method using the stars, sun, and moon as benchmarks of sort, even though celestial bodies move across the sky. So what the hell are you talking about? From sciencejrank.org, remember, remember what they said. There's no triangulation, no trigonometry. From Science J Rank. The optical instruments called sextants have been used as navigational aids for centuries, especially by seafarers. In its simplest form, a sextant consists of an eyepiece, an angular scale called the arc, fitted with an arm to mark degrees. By manipulating the parts, a user can measure the angular distance between two celestial bodies, usually Earth and either the sun or the moon. The observer can thereby calculate his or her position of latitude by using what? Trigonometric operation known as triangulation. Not according to the Baltards. That's what I'm saying. They just make shit up. They're not even parroting the correct course that coming out from their pseudoscientists. You think I just made this up? Go to these places. They're going to tell you this. It's, it's, 
It's every single one. Hampton Nautical, based on mathematics and triangulation, the Sexton was a tool of unique power among sailors to navigate the unprecedented accuracy in the early age of sail. From the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey, in executing sextant triangulation, all triangles, oh my God, should be closed by the observation of all three angles and adjusted for clarity. You're done. What are, what are you talking about? What what freaking galaxy are you baltards coming from? Once I read this, I'll read it again. The, the next page where I'm citing uh, chapter six, the sextant. The angle between, it's just right there at the, at the bottom area. The point directly overhead is the zenith. The angle between lines drawn to the horizon and zenith is 90 degrees or a right angle. This is an astronomer. This is a guy who wrote a book on it. I, I doubt our, our caller has done this. Next book, Celestial Navigation by HO249. You can see here on figure nine, it shows a sketch of what's actually happening. The zenith is the vertical above the navigator with the sextant. And in order to get a right triangle, the horizon and the ocean have to be a flat baseline. Can't do it on curved adjacent. Next, it's a book called Show Me the Proof by Stephen H. White. And go to the citation, the following page. Triangulation is well known to architects, engineers, and surveyors as a simple tool, widely used for centuries. The architect triangulation means discerning with precision key load factors and points in space and time from other reliable, predictable data. To the engineer and surveyor, triangulation means calibrating unknown points with precision space and time on the basis of existing data and irregular distributed samples of data. For both professions, triangulation uses a variety of forms existing data to find the desired and unknown reference point. When the surveyor needs to estimate the height of a point on land surface, she utilizes samples of soil composition, density, variation, contours, weather patterns, and a host of other data. A sextant, a triangulation tool used by mariners, allowed explorers to plot the globe, big mistake, by triangulating the stars with each other and the horizon to ascertain the longitude, latitude at sea. Next slide. Angle of elevation involves four items. Right there. Next slide. Angles of elevation and depression. Learning objective. Draw the measure line segments, angles of geometric figures, including interpreting scale drawings. From the top of the lighthouse, the angle of depression to a buoy is 23 degrees. You can see to the right angle of elevation, you need a right angle. And this is what he was saying. See, it's to the eye line. It's that celestial horizon, that sensible horizon, that astronomical horizon, all these horizons. But basically, you can do that with a bubble sextant or artificial horizon, but you can't do that with the sextant aimed at the real horizon. That's why you do dip to make it happen this way. Again, it must be a right angle. Next. You. Side of line, object, angle of elevation, horizontal. Can't be a curved adjacent, can't work. Next, the color picture of the guy sailing the boat. We all know one? Yes, I've been following it along okay this time. Okay, in simplified terms, when we take a section in the altitude of the sun, we're creating a right angle triangle between it. Let me read that again. In simplified terms, when we take a sextant altitude of the sun, we're creating a right angle triangle between it, the Earth's surface at the GP and ourselves. Great school geometry tells us that the two angles in a right angle triangle must equal 90. Every time they mention 90, they stab their globe. They stab it to death. Next slide. So this is what he was doing, Brian. Height of I parallel to actual horizon, and then you've got actual horizon if height of I is zero minutes, zero seconds, and look at the bottom left. Dip correction is eye level with the sea. Not this phony geometric horizon that's at an angle coming off that sphere. That's make-believe, not the center of the earth, that's make-believe. Everything below the dotted line above that circle is not real. I of I is dip correction, is eye level with the sea. They must measure Earth flat. 
That's what dip is for. Next slide. Lots of pictures like this. They got to extend that tangent plane way out there because it can't work on that curved surface. Isn't this pretty obvious? That's a right angle triangle from their own books. Next slide. Off the arc or on the arc. There's the scale. There's the arc. It's on the instrument. It's a sixth of a circle. Next slide. Here's one showing from the top view. Zero to 90 on this one. Here's the next one showing the arc in green, micrometer drum in red, and the vernier in blue for your red is minutes, blue is tenths of seconds, green is degrees. Next slide, right angle triangle uh, calculator. Right angle, a right angle, I'm sorry, a right triangle is a type of triangle that has one angle that measures 90. Right triangles and the relationship between their sides and angles are the basis of trigonometry. Every time they say subtract from 90, they stab their globe. End of presentation, end of the globe lie, end of this pretender clown. They said things like, you can't get uh, angles to curved baselines in triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Um, then they switched to things like saying you can't measure a curve or measure an angle to a curved surface, which is also quite ridiculous. Of course you can measure a curve or measure an angle to a curved surface. Measure a curve or measure an angle to a curved surface measure a curve or measure an angle to a curved surface measure a curve or measure an angle to a curved measure a curve or measure an angle to a curved surface um so i said we'll tell you what flat earthers how about you just you put your mouth where my money is i i said i'll give you ten thousand dollars you just do it all you can uh, all you need to do is show how it's done of course you can't use any globe presuming uh, information. That was uh, six weeks ago, maybe seven weeks ago, and uh, nothing. Well, I got one entry. He had to use a globe, though, so tough for him. Go ahead. Okay, there's... Uh, the, the, what I think you're looking for is, um, let's see, 29 degrees, um, 40.5 north, um, 36. 57.0 that's got to be within within a few miles that is certainly within the parameters okay and uh you know like some of these um i mean i'm pretty much just to be perfectly honest with you i'm learning all this stuff within the last few days i understood the concept and all that but um i mean to get everything dead on it's it's a lot of math but it it seems like the majority of it like as far as the triangulation and everything is involving a a circle whether you want to call it on a flat earth or a sphere um uh it's, it's like a, a circle on the on the ground uh or a two-dimensional circle if you want to say that your sphere is a two 2d surface but uh so as far as it, it, but you could also do it by trilateral bleh, trilateralization um, trilateration. 
Yeah, trilateration. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so when when uh, I think when when Mitchell from Australia and Mr. Sensible were going back and forth, uh, they kind of both had a point because it seems like there's a you, you know you could do it using both methods. Would would you agree with that? Um, no, uh, there there is no triangulation in celestial navigation. It's uh, there there is no triangulation in celestial navigation. It's uh, there, there is no triangulation in celestial navigation. It's uh, there, there is no triangulation in celestial navigation. It's uh, there, there is no triangulation in celestial navigation. It's uh, there, there is no triangulation in celestial navigation. It's uh, there, there is no triangulation in celestial navigation. It's one is particularly interesting. The one that, on its way to the center of the Earth cuts through the surface of the Earth in a right angle, in a right angle, in a right angle, in a right angle. That point is called a picture point of the celestial object on our surface of the Earth. And then we have an assumed position, somewhere where we think we are. We'll pick one in the vicinity where two pieces of information can be found in the sight reduction tables. One of these is the direction to the picture point, which is called the azimuth. The second piece of information from the sight reduction tables is the angle that we should measure the star if we had been in the assumed position. It's the angle that we should measure the star if we had been in the assumed position. It's the angle that we should measure the star if we had been in the assumed position. It's the angle that we should measure the star if we had been in the assumed position. This is HC for calculated altitude. This is HC for calculated altitude. This is HC for calculated altitude. Since the picture point of the star is moving very quickly on the surface of the Earth because the Earth turns so quickly, it's crucial to have an exact time on board. Now, most probably, we will not measure exactly HC. We will measure something slightly bigger or an angle that is slightly smaller. If it's bigger, we are closer to the picture point, but let's assume we measure an angle which is slightly smaller. So, we are further away from the picture point. This observed altitude, HO, is then just compared with the HC. And the difference between the two are expressed in minutes of a degree. And these minutes of a degree exactly correspond to the nautical miles. The difference between the two are expressed in minutes of a degree. And these minutes of a degree exactly correspond to the nautical miles. The difference between the two are expressed in minutes of a degree. And these minutes of a degree exactly correspond to the nautical miles, the intercept chart, and only mark the assumed position and the intercept. And then we have to draw another line perpendicular to the azimuth. This is our position line. Perpendicular to the azimuth. This is our position line. Perpendicular to the azimuth. This is our position line. So somewhere along the position line we are. Now only shooting at daytime and the moon maybe is not visible, that's not so easy, so we'll shoot the sun twice instead. So we shoot it in the morning, we get a position line. We shoot it a couple of hours later, we get a second position line. And where they intersect, where they cross, that's where we are. And if we have moved in between, we just have to transfer the first position line accordingly. It's not much more complicated. That is celestial navigation in a nutshell. Triangles, which of course is silly because uh, celestial navigation doesn't use triangles. Uh, there, there is no triangulation in celestial navigation.